It's still crazy to think, but Demonis Sabonis is on the Sacramento Kings. A multi-time all-star that has really flown under the radar of the national media despite producing monstrous numbers on a very consistent basis. Regardless of what you think about the trade made to acquire him, it's impossible to disregard the immense talent that Sabonis is, and the Kings made this trade for a reason. And in just 15 games with the Kings, there may not be much to go off of, but it's still important to take a look at the way he was able to impact the team so far. Sabonis gives the Kings many luxuries the team hasn't had in the past few seasons, starting off with the attention that he draws. Domas is an absolute load to deal with, and he's drawing multiple defenders on nearly all of his post touches. This puts a lot of pressure on Sabonis as a passer and forces him to make the right reads with the ball, and more often than not, he does. Here Sabonis is posting up Towns, and when he gets into the paint, D'Lo completely leaves his assignment in order to offer help on the baseline. And while this is happening, the defender at the top of the key digs down, leaving three players converging on Domas. But he doesn't panic, stays strong, and finds the open man in the dunker spot. This is a common theme with Demonis. He's so strong and poised under pressure that it's hard to force him into making bad decisions. Here the second defender is coming from the baseline again, but this time Domas keeps his dribble alive, bringing both of his defenders up to the elbow area until a cutter makes himself available. It's very important for the Kings to cut and space the floor in order for this to work, whether Sabonis is doubled or not. Because regardless of the situation, he's going to find the open player and make the right read. And he's so fundamentally sound to go with his decision making on the fly. This time Sabonis attacks fast, spinning off the catch before the help can trap him into a bad position. Eventually he gets cut off near the basket by yet another help defender, but he stays strong long enough to just allow time for a cutter to act. And of course the reason this amount of attention is drawn in the first place, it's because Demonis is an extremely tough matchup for any player in the post. He's one of the very few dominant low post scorers that we have left in the NBA and he attacks defenders in a number of ways. Domas is one of the strongest players in the league and the physicality he plays with can overwhelm defenders, just bullying opponents on his way to scoring at the basket. Any mismatch stands no chance in holding their own against Sabonis one on one, and in fact most centers struggle maintaining ground in the post as well. But Sabonis is a lot more than just a bulldozer in the post and he has some of the best footwork and post moves among bigs to go along with his strength. He has a phenomenal touch around the basket with his hook shot, and he can get these to fall under pressure and in heavy traffic. Domas utilizes several shot fakes and drop steps in order to get to his spots. He's a very patient player as we've already seen and has a good handle for a big as well. Combine all of these factors together and you have a very unique talent that's tough to stop. Here's the bonus is actually the ball handler of the court rather than receiving an entry pass into the post. He spins into the post around the free throw line, but he keeps his dribble alive in the process. He tries to drop step to get to his spot on the left, but Vooch holds his ground. So here's a shot fake, a pivot to regain balance, and a soft right hook for the finish. And even when players double, Domas has the ability to find ways to finish through it. Like here where he half spins away from the second defender while also getting the primary defender on his back foot to free up space for this strong hand finish. Now we could go all day talking about his post work and the finishes that he has but the point is he's very good. He shot 74% within 3 feet this season and has a field goal percentage of about 56% since 2018. He will never really have problems with efficiency or shot selection with Domas. And as well as in the low post, Sabonis does a lot of damage from the elbow area, even up to the top of the key. He can be used as a playmaking hub and the Kings integrated several actions into their offense in order to account for the rare ability out of a big. We saw so many more backdoor cuts and give and go actions than I can remember in a very long time with this team, and the offense looks so much more fluid with Domas running it. All of this being said, Sabonis has point guard like skills in so many facets of his game, but none are more prevalent than in transition. When he gets defensive rebounds, he doesn't need to look for outlet passes, he can take the ball up the court himself. His handle is not super tight or super flashy, but he's never out of control and he's able to scan the floor to avoid getting himself into trouble. And his incredible vision is always on full display in transition. 
Here we have this first pane with the dribble alive in order to avoid the guard who's reaching. Once Domas gets into the paint, he's cut off, so 180 spin in the air gives him the angle to find the open man for a 3. And this is an example of an absolute pinpoint pass, fitting this through in a very tight window and by the extremely long arms of Mikhail Bridges. There's no secret to transition basketball, it's just about playing smart. And when the ball is in Domas' hands, you can usually trust him to make the right decisions. Perhaps what's most important about Demonis' game on the Kings is how we can fit next to De'Aaron Fox. Sacramento clearly believed in him and I think transition play is a good reason to believe in this pairing for the future. The Kings will have to play fast to truly unlock Fox and Sabonis is someone who can thrive in that atmosphere. Having a big who can run the break is an ultimate luxury in the NBA and his unselfish play is able to create easier looks for Fox than he's used to. Domas is a true 5 so being able to hit the 3 ball is not extremely necessary. He only took about 1-3 a game with the Kings, making only 4 total in his 15 games in Sacramento. But he's a career 32% shooter from deep, so the potential to be a threat from outside is there. For spacing purposes, it would be great for him to take this shot consistently, but I also don't think that it's the end of the world if he doesn't. What I would like to see more from Sabonis, however, is expanding his game to add this midi elbow area jump shot similar to what Chris Webber made his living off of in their early 2000s era. Domas almost never takes jumpers from here, but I don't see why he doesn't. He's definitely a good enough shooter to be able to hit these, and it at least adds another dimension that defense has to worry about. There's no doubt in Demonis Sabonis and his ability to impact the game offensively. He's one of the best offensive big men in the NBA, likely top 5, and he provides value at just about every aspect in offense. Defensively is where most questions will arise with Sabonis. There doesn't seem to be a place in the NBA for bigs who can't protect the rim to some extent, but Demonis is the exception. He lacks the athleticism and shot blocking ability you want in a modern big, so most people write him off as a negative defender. But is that label true? The Kings defensive scheme was primarily drop coverage out of pick and rolls, and in terms of what he can control, Demonis was actually pretty decent in this coverage. He helped encourage the shots that this defense is designed to allow, which are these in-between mid-range area jumpers be often viewed as inefficient. Sabonis often goes into really deep drops trying to discourage any ball handler from attacking inside the paint. And for the most part, this doesn't really change according to personnel, so he's forced to cover a lot of ground in order to close out on these pick and pop threats. But he himself is great at recognizing when and when not to close out on the big soup pop. Here's an example of a deep drop just above the restricted area which allows Fox time to recover and get back to his man and then Domas is able to still close out on his man and at least get a contest on this elbow jumper, although Bryant still has the shot. But the main problem is that Domas just isn't a rim protector, so when guards are able to get ahead of steam and attack downhill, he really stands no chance. He lacks the verticality and leaping ability in order to truly alter these shots, so some of the more athletic guards and wings are able to use his lack of presence in the paint. The Wolves were smart in how they attacked Domas, getting into early offense pick and rolls for Edwards who is nearly unstoppable with a full head of steam. And the backpedaling Sabonis just has nothing to offer here. And the problem with the Kings drop coverage scheme was how unequipped it was when dealing with great pull up shooters. Like here when Fox has trouble getting through the screen, Curry is able to step into a wide open jumper with Sabonis already in a drop near the elbow. The Kings would sometimes mix things up depending on the matchup, for instance they tried to trap SGA off screens to force the ball out of his hands. This forces Domas to come up and apply pressure, but sometimes he would have trouble and overcome it too early which just opens up room for these blow by drives. Sabonis is certainly a smart defender who communicates well and you can see this in some of these veer back or panic switches. Now we already mentioned Sacramento is a drop coverage team and they don't want to have Sabonis be forced to switch on the guards. But sometimes he has no choice and he does a great job of recognizing when to make these unplanned switches. Sabonis doesn't have the quickest feet, but for a big, his lateral speed isn't too bad. He could sometimes hold his own against guards on mismatches and at least force them into settling for jumpers. And going back to rim protection, the sad truth is Domas provides very little to zero value. At times he can just be a step slow getting into position, and when he is in position he usually just doesn't have the vertical ability to truly alter shots. He also has a tendency to get quick shot, so on these plays he won't even get a hand up. Here by the time Sabonis realizes ball handler is attacking the basket, it's already too late. 
Kobe White has already exploded out of his first step and when Domas realizes he can't cut him off, he basically gives White a free layup at the basket. And SGA isn't even attacking downhill here, so Sabonis should have the advantage considering the height difference. But for whatever reason, Shea's reverse layup takes Domas by surprise and he doesn't even attempt to contest. I would say the one area you don't have to worry about with Domas defensively is his work on low post scores. Post scoring is less about shot blocking and more about strength, and Sabonis is almost always going to be the stronger player in these matchups, so he's able to hold his own and prevent bully ball from happening. So the question is, is it possible to build a good defense around a player like Sabonis who struggles to protect the rim? Well, the answer is actually objectively yes. In fact, the 2020 Pacers rank 6th in defensive rating, with Sabonis being the lone all-star on the roster. Now, that team was built a lot different than the Kings are right now, but the point is that it is still possible. But Sabonis is a star no matter what way you look at it. He is too valuable offensively to discredit him just because of his limitations on the other end. With an offseason to adjust under a new scheme and a new head coach, I would expect that we see even a different level of Domas next season. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown and follow me at Sack Film Room on Twitter if you haven't already. I have content there daily and if you enjoy my work here then you'll definitely enjoy it on Twitter as well. Once again, thanks for the support and see you guys next time.